Hey guys, Nick here, and today we'll be getting into part 27 of What If Madison's Family Joined Rick. Now in the last episode, or rather the episode prior to the last episode, we got into the revelation of Shane joining the Whispers and being the head honcho, the Alpha. Then, last episode, we got the entire 21 minute backstory as to how he survived and led to him leading the Whispers in a Shane type fashion. Today, we will be getting into the war between Shane leading the Whisperers, as well as Beta being included, versus Rick and Madison. Let's get into it. After the heartfelt story of Shane explaining his where he's been, how he got into the Whisperers, and so on, he ends the note on saying that he has come here for revenge against Rick. Rick is only sad and in shock and just completely silent for a second, before turning into the wreck we all know and love and aiming his python straight at Shane, showing that even though he said that story, Rick is not going down without a fight. But Shane just smirks at Rick, saying that that's not a wise decision, and they didn't come here just Shane and these whispers he sees before him. And two other whisperers that weren't in the crowd pull out with Luke and Heath, as hostages, showing that Shane is dead set in killing Rick here and getting his revenge against Rick and Madison for what they did. And Shane even says so himself, that it didn't have to go this way, but, well, they kind of set the tone whenever they killed Strand and almost killed him. Now this can go one of two ways. Number one, they can surrender quietly and perhaps only a few people have to die, but Rick is definitely going to be one of them alongside Madison. Or number two, every single one dies. And the communities, oh, screw them. There's a way to get this somewhat peacefully, but Rick and Madison, they ain't going down or they are going down, and they will die, either way. Rick just holds his weapon at his side, and then he smirks. And this throws Shane kind of off, because they obviously have the better plan here, so what could Rick be thinking? But then, all of a sudden, two Whisperers are immediately killed from gunshots, because cavalry that I did not introduce has arrived that would still be at Hilltop. Henry and Benjamin have killed the Whisperers, and then Morgan steps out, showing that this was Rick's contingency plan all along. Either that or Morgan would just throw Benjamin and Henry like to the side while they were talking. I've done similar moves like that before. But Shane, not caring in the slightest for anyone at this point, shoots Benjamin in the leg and, you know, ultimately kills him because it was in the femoral artery. That's how he died in the original show. Morgan is set into his clear mode because we that's the Morgan we all know and love. And then it flashes him to Owen and everyone else, and we all know how that was. He tries to throw his spear, using a move that he tried against Negan and succeeded, but Shane dodges, having ultimately, he knows somewhat how Morgan operates, so he dodges, and a whisper gets the stick lodged in his head instead. But this gives Rick the opening he wants. He rushes towards Shane, and Luke steals him straight across the cheek. And to a normal man, this would have gashed out someone's cheek and would have left it pretty empty. But to Shane, the way he is now and how strong he is, especially trained up and leading the Whisperers, this just scars his face and makes him mad. Because now, oh, they're going down the second option. This is war. And let's face it, that was going to happen either way. Shane tries to reach for his gun 
and ultimately just end Rick right then and there. But Rick ain't gonna go down without a fight, especially after a strike like that to Shane's cheek, and uses Lucille to just smack the weapon straight out of Shane's hand, and this would take some force, but we all know that Rick would definitely have it in him to do so, even if Shane had a really strong grin. By that point, both of them reached for their pistols, while well, Rick is Python and Shane, his pistol we all know and love, and they both aim at the direct same time, and this would be a straight second maneuver. So, this would be a great opening sequence to their fight. Just then, the stick, well, Morgan's stick, that was used to get lodged in the Whisperer's head, is lodged out by another Whisperer and thrown to Shane. And now, Shane has another advantage point. Not to say that he was technically down an advantage point, he just got his gun knocked down. But now, he has Morgan's stick, even though, you know, he has never been taught Aikido or anything. He basically knows how to use a weapon, so I'm not going to throw it past him how, know how to use the stick. Rick uses his machete to fight off, and while this is going on, Shane knows that the machete could very well cut off the stick, so tries to reach for his gun, but Rick stops him, knocking him against the wall of Hilltop, and this would replicate their Season 2 fight but in a much more epic fashion, because two things. Number one, that fight never happened. And number two, this would be season nine, Rick and Shane. So think about how more epic that fight sequence would be. And Shane, he is definitely more on par with Rick than we saw him in that fight. Well, obviously from what I just stated. And number two, because of how much Shane has literally improved as a character. Much more so than my Shane and both my What If Rick Spared Shanes. But he is not an outright winner in this cause. Even though he does much better than the fight we saw them in in Season 2, he doesn't win. He is ultimately put to the ground injured and not on death's door, but he is down on the ground injured because he didn't account for the fact of how good a fighter and how much Rick grew and is genuinely surprised. But Rick, it's not like he's unfazed. He is just slightly less phased than Shane and ultimately stands over him with his python and gets ready to shoot him, this time ready to end him for good. But Shane just stares at Rick. He stares at him with eyes that he couldn't, no one could get past. This is a dead stare. He doesn't think that Rick's going to do it and even taunts him about it because he, di he didn't kill him once. And they were once brothers. There is no way that Rick will now have it in him to kill the brother that he once had who is now still alive. And he taunts him over and over again. This would be a season two maneuver. And Rick, half expecting, probably, from you guys that he would do it, but he doesn't. He drops his weapon, because Shane's right. Even though Shane is just heartless at this point and re tried to rebel with Strand, he's alive again and wants to give him a second chance. They don't have to do this, but Shane just smirks. There, He knew that Rick wouldn't do it, and goes for the kill with his own gun, but Daryl, right by the gates by Rick's side at that moment, uses his crossbow to put out Shane's lights. Not with one arrow, not with two, not with three, but a whole bludgeon of arrows and even slight gunshots to make absolutely dead on sure that Shane is never, ever coming back. And that is the true end of Shane. Then a gunfight rings out between the remaining whisperers that Shane went to with Hilltop and the people of Hilltop, with Rick and Madison obviously being included. And, yeah, it goes as well as you would think. The Whisperers almost have little to no chance. And, ultimately, this leads with the Whisperer army and any walkers that would pop in nearby ultimately killed, and the Hilltop community is saved from further harm. And with that, you would think that that's the end of the Whisperer saga, but no. 
I'll get more deep into that in a second because there's one problem left at Hilltop that nobody saw or thought coming. One whisperer unaccounted for, and this comes back to bite them, because just then, after all is seemingly said and done, a knife is thrown, unbeknownst to anyone in the moment, except one uncertain and very unfortunate person, Dale, who had lived much longer than his any of his iterations, and the knife goes straight into his stomach. And with how Dale would be very, very old at this point, this unfortunately would mean the end of his life by Dante, the surviving whisperer who was held captive. And yeah, you thought he would get away with this? Nah, he is gunned down almost instantaneously and completely. And yeah, everyone would be in that kill set at that point, especially after Shane. And Rick would be the one to do the deed gunning him down because... Dale meant a lot to especially Rick, and in the original, he even wanted to honor Dale, even though that didn't last long. But, I mean, everyone cared about Dale, especially here, but Rick, I feel, would take great pleasure in just killing Dante himself. But he knows from Shane's story that the Whisperers are far from done. And they need to prepare for another attack, but they need to be like ready, ready, like guns on aim and ready to fire at a moment's notice. Madison most certainly agrees because if this beta is around from what Shane had talked about, that means that he'll be coming to Hilltop next with the entire horde that they were talking about and more. So yeah, they're going to be more than ready. Once Beta figures out that Shane hasn't come back after such a significant amount of time, this actually upsets him. Because, like I've said before, he really, really appreciated Shane more as the Alpha than Alpha. And I hope that makes sense. He saw Shane for something more than Alpha would ever be. And to see that he had fallen against the supposedly better group... This means one of two things. Either they were ambushed, or Shane really wasn't the alpha that he thought he was. And with that, Beta is ultimately the alpha. And he leads not only the Horde, but the entire rest of the Whisperer army to Hilltop to launch a final attack. And this wouldn't be the first time that I've made Beta go to Hilltop in this certain sense, but it is a lot different from what the context and dynamic is because this time beta is going to have a much better plan with the whispers and himself trained a lot by shane beta and the whispers will be coming from one end of hilltop sort of like a distraction if you will and the few other whispers that there would be not to say there's a huge like not to say there's a small number but the remaining whispers would lead the horde at the back end. So it would be a literal, just army assaulted attack. And soon enough, Beta and the whispers and the horde are straight at Hilltop. And Rick and Beta actually lock eyes. And with that, the ultimate gunfight, the ultimate war, the ultimate of ultimate battles in The Walking Dead would commence. Sort of like the season 10, like, mid-season 10 finale from when they fought the Horde at Hilltop, like with Daryl and everybody else. Sort of like that, except 10 times more epic. The gunfight would ensue. Small people would die, not too many big ones, really, but the Whisperers and small Hilltop and Alexandra and st stuff members would be taken out. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to anyone, the Horde is making themselves known to the gates, or to the back end gates of Hilltop, even though there really isn't any gates at the back end, but you guys get what I mean. And soon enough, they breach, and the Horde would start to slowly overtake Hilltop. And it seems like this is the end. There's way too many. There's no way that they can get through all of this. But just when everything seems like it's going to be for naught, Jadis's group, the Scavengers, which are still around, by the way, the Kingdom, led by Ezekiel and Jerry and Shiva still around, and 
Oceanside all join forces at that moment, sort of like the season seven finale. And they ultimately are able to start overtaking the Horde and the Whisperers. And this would definitely be a great, not only reference to season seven's finale, but a great ending setup for the Whisperer battle. Beta is having his own hands full. Seeing all this happen, he is caught off guard by Rick. And how strong he is, that doesn't matter. This, ultimately, was Rick's best chance to get him in the weakest point of himself. Holding him at point with Lucille, and then gunning him so many times in the chest that however tough Beta is, it slowly starts to affect him. Rick unloads every piece of his python ammo straight into Beta's chest, and then uses his machete to mercilessly, completely, and just tear him apart, essentially. And with that, Beta, the Whispers, the Horde, everything and anything is taken down. And even though this would expend a good deal of ammo on both sides, well, the Whisper side really doesn't matter anymore, truly. Even though it would expend a great deal of ammo for our heroes, they have collected enough ammo over this time, especially with the help of three other communities, so this wouldn't be a great deprive of sorts. So, yeah. But that's still not the end of the Whispers. I know, a few fake outs, but there's another, lo one more thing that was left undone. And no, it's not Strand. I know you guys would probably think that. Beth is taken down by a gunshot. Rick looks over, and he cannot believe what he sees. Lydia. The one thing that I did not talk about from the Whisperer side, because remember, she'd still be a part of the Whisperers. And she killed Beth in a rage over Shane, Beta's, and everyone's death, including Alpha's. But just then, she is encountered by a very angry Daryl over the loss of Beth. But she but this very much surprises Daryl. He's kicked back very hard. Lydia would be a trained warrior under the influence of Shane, so she would not take this sitting down. But she kind of does, because after that moment, we get a Rick and Daryl versus Jesus dynamic, where Rick takes the lead after Daryl's knocked back and effectively shoots Lydia down. And the Whisper Saga has finally come to a close. No strand, small little fakeouts, but ultimately meaning that our heroes come out on top, and Shane has been killed once and for all. With this, and everything that's happened so far, how do you think that the Reaper's situation in the Commonwealth will take into a factor towards the end of this story? Do you think that it will be even near a problem? Or do you think that the story is set in stone for its finale next time? And that's where we leave things for the moment. It'll probably be like another part or two till the finale. I might do the finale next time, depending on how much screenshots I have by the time I'm done like making this. But I hope that you guys have enjoyed the series nonetheless, especially Shane leading the Whisperers. Like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you guys next time.